never know what message you could be putting out there that someone needed to hear that day. Yeah. And if you if you can't get over yourself and get over, hey, I have something to share and I have something that might help someone, if you can't get over it, then you might not be able to help that person. <laughs> You're listening to the Christoph Lewis Podcast, a podcast where I have conversations with inspirational people. My name is Chris, but my family calls me Christoph. My goal is to have as many conversations as possible with people who have forged their own path by pursuing their dreams, making them a reality, all the while emitting positivity and sharing this knowledge with others. I seek these people out and share this information with you, proving to the world that you can do what makes you happy and do what you want for a living while being a good human being. We'll talk about careers, but we'll also cover any story that inspires. Let's do this while helping each other. Thanks for listening. I'm happy you're here. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Christoph Lewis Podcast. This is conversation number 51, and I am super pumped right now. I just had a wonderful, wonderful conversation with my guest. Her name is Amy Turner, and she is a rapid transformation coach and she deals with hypnotherapy she used to do the old nine to five with marriage and family therapy for about eight years so kind of like the amount of time i was in the navy and she successfully transitioned out of that nine to five and is working for herself and helping way more people than she used to and actually effectively helping people now way more than she used to. So it was an absolutely just brilliant and glowing conversation. I thoroughly enjoyed it, like for real. Like I cannot wait to share this one. If you guys want to talk to me personally, for free, you can find me at www.christophlewis.com. Like go over, click the contact me tab, send your information in. I want to help you. Hit me up. Let's talk. Like a lot of you guys hit me up on direct messages for Instagram or whatever, like Facebook. But I think it would be much more beneficial mutually. Like, I can help you better via phone call. So hit me up and let's figure that out. Remember, you can find me also on Instagram at Christoph Lewis. I would love to hear from you there. And I'll be looking forward to that phone call. So without further ado, welcome to the Christoph Lewis Podcast. Thank you. I'm very excited for you to be here. I enjoyed already talking to you so much before the camera started rolling. And Uh, What I love about you right off the bat is something that I've already brought up to you and that is that you used to work a nine to five and you no longer work that nine to five and more importantly, you worked it for a long time. You were in the marriage and family therapy. You're doing that for eight years, which I made the contrast to myself. I was in the Navy for nine years and then left that to do something that I wanted to do. So you left that behind to do some other stuff. And then what is also awesome is that you are a fellow podcaster. And I think that's really cool. So how did you get into like how I just want people to know like the mindset that goes behind this career transition because it's not an easy thing to do so like how did you decide that you wanted to do that oh my gosh that is you're so right it is not easy to do at all um I think for me I just got pretty lucky and just working my nine to five and realizing like having so many like an influx of clients emailing me and wanting to work with me and just so busy having clients on the side and working my job to where I just really felt like okay right now I can do it I can afford it let's go and I'm not like that wasn't the hard decision the hard like the hard part is once you quit your job and to just keep the income coming and keep your stress low and your mindset high huh So that's interesting. You said, so one question that I've been asked before, or let's make it even more relevant. One question that I've asked of myself is that when is a good time to make the transition? Because you said like when you could kind of uh, fiscally maintain yourself doing that. So I think a lot of times, like even myself, again, I'll I'll, I'll just stick with that example and speak from experience. I thought that maybe I had to just quit my job and go all in on, you know, like this podcast and this coaching that I'm getting into more recently. And I thought that was the only way I could do it because I am a huge fan of a plan A, 
but and like sticking to a plan a but at the same time like you have to be smart like we were just talking like i have a family I have a baby girl now like there are some serious responsibilities that i have so i think and it sounds like you didn't just do it and you know not have anything lined up so how did you feel comfortable to know like obviously you crunch the numbers and you were like okay i can maintain this but did you maybe make a little bit less initially than your actual quote unquote nine to five or how, like what comfortability level was okay for you to make that transition? You know what, for me, it was just like, I realized I crunched numbers. So I realized, yeah. okay, I really at, at what the investment was to work with me at the time, I really thought, okay, well, I only really need to get four clients a okay. month and that will make up my income that I get 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. And so then I, and I really like, the thing is, is like going into being a therapist, going into the healing field, they tell you in college, look, you're not here to make money. You're here to help people. Yeah. And <laughs> I always heard that, but I never, I never wanted to take it to heart. I was like, no, that's not true. We're putting in our time, our effort, yeah, our energy. Absolutely. We're helping people. I should be able to make good money. And so as soon as I was realizing I'm making the same amount of money, maybe working, what is that, like 15 hours a week wow. as opposed to 40 hours yeah. a week, then I was like, okay, no brainer, let's go, it's time. Yeah, and that's awesome. And I think what's really cool about that is like, even though you're working less hours, I feel like those are hours that you're more committed to your clients because you're not, your mind isn't worried about your day job. And I think that's like one of the things that keeps me really motivated working towards where you're at right now is because I know that once I can finally make that change and make that shift in careers and I can fully commit to the podcast and I can fully commit to helping other people in their lives, then I'm like all in at that point and I'll be even more effective to myself and I'll be more effective to the people that I'm speaking with and helping their careers and their career transitions. So that's what I really like about finally like teetering and fully just dropping into that full force and you're just so committed. And I think everybody around you would be able to see that shift. And then, like we said, you were only doing, you know, you said 15 hours, right? Or 15 or 20 hours. Yeah. Which, About, is, which yeah. is crazy because then like, once you kind of get a little bit comfortable, then you can start pushing yourself again, which I think everybody should do. And then since you're working less than half the hours, then you can, I mean, if you, simple math, you can double your income just like that, you know, just by working the same amount. And that's not to say you can't work even more than the 40 hours because now you're doing something that you really enjoy to do. And oh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And I think equally important, another point that you made, which I love you brought up, is people said, you know, we're here to help people not make money. Now, one of the things I have, I've literally preached from like conversation number one, this is 51. So 51 conversations, I've said that there is no reason why you can't both make money and help other people. And that doesn't make you like some bad person to want to make like make money. Like that's your time. You should be compensated for it. So why not? And I think a lot of times the money has this negative connotation around it. What do you, have you seen that at all? Oh gosh, yeah. In the in the spiritual field and the healing field, I mean, it's everywhere. It's oh, if if you're, I mean, you hear it everywhere. If oh, if you're spiritual, you can't take a lot of money. You can't be greedy. You're here to help yeah, people. Yeah. And I've just subscribed to so many people that say no, that's BS. That's yeah. not true yeah. at all. You're and actually, <clears throat> the people who are here to help should be making the most money because then we are the ones that are in a sense, running this country because we're compassionate and empathetic yeah, yes. and care, and it's just going to be a better place. Which is crazy because it reminds me of the last person I talked to right before you, Ashlyn. She was supposed to be, supposed to be, air quotes for everybody listening, like a teacher, and she would have been quarantined. I described it to her quarantine to teaching in this classroom, right? Now she's making a lot more money, and she was able to travel the world, go to 60-plus countries, and now she's by default, teaching way more people than she would have ever taught in this classroom. So I think that's really cool about what you're doing too. So as opposed to being like a therapist sitting on a couch, you know, in some cliche like setting, you're able to not only affect one person's life, you know, one after another, but you have, you know, you have a website, you can do all these things here. And another thing I wanted to point out is your rapid transformational therapy. So that's something that I know you preach 
And what's cool about that is it, it's rapid, so that's quicker. So like, I wanted to get into it without like divulging your secrets, but like, how do you make this rapid and how, how do you still, or how are you able to affect people's life on a quicker base, like on a quicker program? Yeah. So the funny thing about that is I was a complete skeptic. I didn't believe that you could heal rapidly. Huh. And so the woman who created this, she's from England. And so they can say things very different than we can say in America. <laughs> so <laughs> her whole tagline was, I can cure anyone in one session. And so I was like, the good statement. little therapist. <laughs> yeah. I was like, who do you think you are? Like, who is this crazy lady that thinks she can cure people in one session? But I wanted to know more. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to take her course. I'm going to prove her wrong. I'm going to get my money back. Oh, There's wow. a whole reason. I didn't believe that you could be, you could heal rapidly because we're not taught that in therapy. We're sure. taught that people are going to come every two weeks for years and you're just going to see like a little bit of changes instead of rapidly changing. And so... Yeah, I found her program. I started practicing on friends and coworkers. I wasn't very good at it. I've never done hypnotherapy before. And even not being good at it, people are sitting there crying with me. People are telling me things that happened to them in their life they've never told anyone before. Yeah. And that's when I knew, oh my gosh, this woman is not crazy. Wow. This really works. And this is how I'm going to be able to help a massive amount of people in a much faster amount of time than I could sitting in group therapy or doing one-to-one -one with what I was doing in my day job. And I think that's really interesting because I think that if you're in the medical field, yes, you want to help people. And I'm not in any way about to bash anybody in the medical field. But if you would think if you want to make money as any kind of doctor, whether it's for the brain or the body, that and this is going to sound really bad, but you want them to be sicker longer so that you have them longer as a client, right? I mean, you can see that kind of in the pharmaceutical industry or something, right? That's kind yes. of a, kind of a nasty area, right? So I think for you and for the, this woman, for other people to come out and be like one shot, you know, and done, that's saying something. So I think that really means that you would believe in your work, right? Because you're saying... I'm going to talk to you one time and then, uh, and frankly, you're not going to need help anymore after I do. Yeah. And huh. it's crazy. I mean, there are some people that need more than just one session, but sure, sure. the, the results people can get in that one, two hour session is like equivalent to maybe a year of therapy. I mean, it's, it's crazy. The things people would tell me in these sessions that took me years to get with clients doing talk therapy is, is just amazing. And I think there's so much scientific reasons behind it. Yeah. I would say for me, the, the thing that I notice is it's like during hypnotherapy, your conscious mind, so the part of you that wants to defend, the part of you that wants to rationalize, it sleeps. It's asleep the whole mm -hmm. time. And then your unconscious, which stores every single memory you've ever had in your life, comes to life. And it's like, oh my gosh, finally, we get to talk about this. Let me show you why you believe yeah. this about yourself. Let me show you this. Yeah. Let me show you this. And it's like, finally, you understand why you don't think that you're good enough. This is why. Yeah. And then we have all those different memories to work with. And once we have that, that's when we can do the change work. That's when we can give yourself that voice mm -hmm. that you never got in that time. That's when we can really get in there and rewire your subconscious mind to who you truly were born to be. Yeah, and that's one of the things I read that you're all about is shattering people's not good enough mentalities. And I absolutely love that. And again, like you've hit, this is like probably now the third time that I'm saying one thing that I preach on here and it is. And this is why I wanted to talk to you so badly is because I think people sell themselves short all the time. I sell myself short. Everybody I know, I firmly do think sells themselves short as well. And that's not like a negative thing like, hey, you're selling yourself short, you're slacking or anything because I'm saying it to myself. I just think we underestimate ourselves and I truly and deeply believe that we are capable of so much more than we think we are. And that's why I want to have these kind of conversations and record these conversations for people to show them that it is feasible. And yeah, and, yeah, and you're doing it with, and, and you, you're saying that expediting the process of this transformation is through the hypnotherapy as opposed to, you said classically, like sitting there and having some kind of talk. How did, how did you describe, you said talk therapy, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
huh. And so that's because, and, and it makes sense to me. Like I, I've personally, I've never been hypnotized, but I can at least see getting in a kind of a state where you're letting your guards down, if you will, so that you're not subjected to like having your walls up right so like you're kind of saying like you're able to get into your deep into your subconscious and really talk to like who that individual is and i think that's a really cool um way to go about it and what do you say to like people that are maybe skeptical of like oh it's hypnotherapy it's some woo woo stuff do you get people like that oh all the time (laughs) i I mean i was one yeah that's right you did say that you did say that you're like yeah that's bullshit where they're gonna make you do like chip and dells or sing and or something crazy on stage or i thought it was for like oh to help people take tests yeah like that's our smoking everyone knows that right so yeah, I, w- I was a skeptic. So yeah. I love it when I get on the phone with skeptics because then I get to tell my well, story. Like, look, let me tell you, I've been yeah. trained in therapy. I've been trained where all we can do is just talk about our problems. I didn't know hypnotherapy could go and help with trauma. I didn't know hypnotherapy could help with depression, anxiety, all these different things and really give mm-hmm. someone their purpose, really make sure. someone know that they are good enough, make someone understand that where they came from or what beliefs they were taught of who they are, aren't the truth. And for them to believe that about themselves, I had no clue that hypnotherapy could do that. Yeah. Well, I think that shows a really good point. And that example is that when you do something yourself, when you've lived something yourself, you can speak towards it a lot more. Like, so again, I was nine year veteran of the Navy and that resonates with a lot of people that were in the Navy or in the military in general, because it's one of those things that only like, you can't really experience anything like that if you're not in the military. And there's a lot of things that are even more uh, definitive within the Navy that you can only, only experience there. So that when somebody, it doesn't matter what it is. Like when somebody goes through something that you've gone through, you automatically, I wouldn't say maybe trust, but maybe I would like, maybe there's like some kind of trust there. Like, Hey, you know, I was a skeptic, but, and, and you tried to disprove this woman you said, but, and you went through it and you tried it on your friends and family, but you're like, Holy shit. Like, this is working on people and it's helping people more importantly, you know? So then like, why not do it yourself? So I think that's really important. And that's one way to just, I don't know, just make friends with people and help people out at the same time. Like when you can go through things and equally it helps you, I'm sure. Right. To be able to help people because it feels great to help people. Oh yeah. And especially being able to do it so quickly and instead of like, okay, we're going to talk every two weeks for the rest of your life and you're, you're eventually going to get better. Or like you brought up pharmaceuticals early, we'll take this pill and it'll help with right. your brain chemicals. And it's like, that's not even the truth yeah. that your brain chemicals aren't unbalanced because it like, it's just because you believe these BS beliefs about you. That's not even true. Yeah. The mind is so powerful. I mean, I don't know how many times I've heard in my life that I'm trying to think of this. I heard him on a podcast recently. It's unfortunate. I can't recall his name right now, but he's doing a lot of mind experiments in the sense of, I don't think it was directly hypnotherapy, but he had a lot of conditions and he just kept on practicing and practicing and practicing, having this mind over matter mentality. And this is him speaking, but whatever he had, like serious stuff he had, he was able to eradicate that simply by focusing on it. And I'm going to have to get back to the podcast listeners about that. So please somebody remind me, but essentially this guy was, I mean, he was on a, he was on like Joe Rogan podcast. So he's like a pretty vetted guy, you know, author, and they were talking about it and he seemed to uh, stick pretty, pretty close to what he was saying about that. So I think it is interesting. And I think if you really want to make a change in yourself that uh, you be willing to look down different avenues to find help and not rule things out like that. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I'm not sure who you're talking about, but I follow yeah. Dr. Joe Dispenza and he mm-hmm. was one of the ones who he, he teaches transformation through meditation. And what he did is he had a bike accident and like completely ruptured his spine sure. and he saw himself putting his spine back together Holy every single moly. day to where he didn't need surgery. Yeah. And I think that's. It goes a lot with like the hypnotherapy, like people discount it, but, and it's good to be a skeptic, like at first maybe, but like, don't automatically discount things. Like if you would have automatically discounted that, then you wouldn't be in the position to where you're at now, leaving your nine to five behind. So I think like not so much just on like what we're talking about hypnotherapy and this as well, but I think like on general career transition for somebody, like don't be quick to discount 
or think you're not good enough for something because more than likely, if you just do a little bit of research on it, do your due diligence on this, you may find that it actually works. And more importantly, you may find that like, that's just the beginning for you. Because I imagine when you initially did your career transition, you're like, wow, this is a lot. I'm not sure I can handle it. But now looking back, you're like, wow, I've, I've come so far from that transition already. Oh yeah. So, so incredibly far. And like one thing that I love telling clients is it's like, look, do you really care what technique someone uses if you get the results that you want? For real. Like seriously, if you got something wrong with you, like I, I've, you know, I don't really talk about it on the podcast too much, but I've had some physical stuff wrong with me in the last couple of years. And honestly, I, I was at a point on some of the things where I was like, yeah, I, I honestly, I don't care what you do. I just don't want it to be a thing anymore. So when it comes to the mind as well, like if somebody's willing to sit there with you and talk you through this and spend some of their time on helping you, like you might as well try it out, especially if nothing else is working because you don't know what's going to work. And I think if you come to a point where you really want to make a shift in your mental ability to live your life, then why not try it? Exactly. I mean, what, what do you have to lose? If that's going to give you the result that you want, if that's going to give you the healing that you want, then I mean, don't who cares? I mean, the more open you can be, the more you realize how many techniques, modalities, healing things there are out there. If you look past the modality and whatever your beliefs are and are just open, there's so much out there. I think that, and again, like I I can automatically, when you say these things, I can just see the connect to everything else. Like regardless of what you're talking about, if you have this like limited tunnel vision belief system on everything and you just think what you know now is all there's ever to know and everybody else is wrong and I'm right and there's only one way to do this. Like if you approach life like that, you're really not going to progress and you're going to have that fixed mindset and your growth mindset is just going to be shattered speaking of being shattered like it's not going to be it's going to be non-existent so if you have this mindset where you're approaching everything like well uh, amy might be able to teach me something or chris might be able to teach me something or even though i may know this better like we all can teach somebody something and you have to just be open to all these ideas because if you truly want to be open to the evolution of your mind and always growing and learning things then you have to be you know susceptible to all these new bits of information but then now i want to transition to you're also a podcaster and the shattering BS beliefs podcasting. So you just kind of wanted to take this. I mean, podcasting is hot. Podcasting is awesome. I know a guy who does one too. It's pretty (laughs) nice, but like, so you just wanted to like transition into that and like get your word out more that way. Right. Cause I mean, it's, it's a great way to get your word out. Yeah. I, I didn't even think I wanted to be a podcaster. I was just the long story, but one of my mentors called me out on one of his calls and he's like, Amy, you're brilliant at this stuff. You're brilliant at childhood wounds. You're brilliant at the mind. You're brilliant at transformation. Why aren't you teaching this on a larger scale? And so he called me out and he said, no, you're going to go teach this tomorrow. Give us a date and time. And so I did. I did a Facebook Live on, uh, there's two parts. So I made it two parts about why we're sabotaging and how it comes from our childhood. Mm. And people raved about it. And I realized, oh my gosh. People need to know this information. I mean, when when we're so good at what we do, we think everyone knows until yes, we yeah. do it. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then we do it. And then we realize, oh, not everyone knows this. And yeah. I don't know, someone told me, Amy, you need to start a podcast. And so then I just looked up on YouTube, how do you start a podcast? And go. I just took my Facebook Live topics and put them into a podcast. No, and I think that's awesome. There's a lot of good points there. One of them that you said is that when you become really good at something, you think that everybody knows. And I think that's because you're so obsessed with it, like this podcast, right? Like I wish more people listen to the podcast because I think there's really great information out here, like the information that you've divulged to us today. But it's what I'm obsessed about. It's what I talk about all the time. So therefore, like not everybody's going to know everything about the podcast like I know. So whatever it is that is your podcast in this variable, like insert your variable here, If you want people to know about it, you have to be relentless about telling people that this is what you do, especially like if you're doing this, you know, hypnotherapy for rapid transformational therapy, like you need to be telling people all the time. So like your mentor, you said that recommended you to do the Facebook live phenomenal idea. Like, and I talk about again, social media all the time. If, and if you're not using social media to get your word out there, if you're not doing Facebook live, Instagram live, Instagram stories, 
posting, LinkedIn, like we met on LinkedIn. Like there are a, a, a plethora of ways that you can meet people and you just have to use the tools that are out there. And it's never been easier to get started doing things. Like you said, you just looked up on YouTube how to do it. So, I mean, there's really no excuses at this point in time in history. I'm telling you. No, there's no excuses at all. And so you never know what message you could be putting out there that someone needed to hear that day. Yeah. And if you, if you can't get over yourself and get over, hey, I have something to share and I have something that might help someone, if you can't get over it, then you might not be able to help that person. Yeah, and you need to get over it yourself first. That's right. You need to make peace with it. And that's why I'm a huge advocate of writing things down. So if you're not okay with saying something to other people, because it's really tough. Like, I remember the first time I got on Instagram stories, like, I was petrified. Like, absolutely petrified. It was very vulnerable. And that was something that I had to get over. But I do specifically remember the first time I shared on Instagram stories. It was so awkward. I still have the video to, as a reminder. But it was actually uh, dealing with some of the medical stuff that I brought up. And I was like, hey, I've been dealing with this. And this is the first... Or, I can't remember what it was. It said, oh yeah, one year of being healthy, of staying fit. Because I remember when I was able to, I had a surgery like in January of 2016. And after I was able to be uh, fit to work out again, I started working out and I was like, I'm not going to miss a single day of working out. And I think for the whole year, 365 days after I posted that video, I missed six days out of the calendar year. So I like stuck to it. There was a couple occasions, maybe like being sick or I was like seriously hurt or something, but I was like, this is why, I don't know. I think a lot of people question maybe why people like work out so much or whatever. And we all have our reasons. But like, to me, it was like, I was stagnant for months and I couldn't like really do anything. So I was like, when I get back, like there was a chance that I was not able to do something for a long time. Now I'm able to do it. So like, don't take for granted your physical. And now we're we're talking a lot about mental capability. Like you need to both, or you need to exercise both of these things and, it's just funny, like I was saying, I, I kind of got off track, but it's, it's still important tangent, but being behind the camera and sharing your story, like you're saying, is very important, but like I had to first overcome it myself in that Instagram story that's obviously been ingrained in my head like from two years ago, or three years <laughs> ago now, but once you get over it yourself and then there's just no number, like there's no limit on amount of people you can help now, like we we're talking about all these social media platforms and I know when you made the decision to do podcasting as well, like you're just by default automatically going to help more people. Oh yeah. And I'll get people that email me or that have had a friend say, Hey, you need to go listen to her podcast. And I would have never, I would have never found those people if I didn't start the podcast. Yeah. It's crazy how many doors it opens you up to. So like now we've met and honestly, if there's anybody that you've seen on my podcast that, would be great on your show it would work inversely like that like i'm like hey yeah this guy or girl would be perfect so the more people you reach and the more people you help the more people you reach and the more people you help like it's just like this uh, compounding you know you talk about like finances compound interest well i think there's compound interest on this like networking and this this knowledge that you learn so the more you learn the more you learn because you just know these are different avenues that you can go and you can learn and you can meet people and it just, it doesn't stop. And I think it just, that's why growth to me is so beautiful. And that's why it's awesome that you opened up and started podcasting as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Growth is, is huge. And I mean, I was scared. Oh my gosh. To start my podcast, to do my first Facebook live. I was so scared. scared, but that's the thing. It's, you know, one of my favorite, I have so many influencers that I love, but one of my favorite ones, Lisa Nichols, mm-hmm. she says, your story is no longer your story. Once it mm, happens, yeah. it's it's your story to share because your st- story is going to help other people. So mm-hmm. you can't be selfish and hold it in. No, absolutely not. And that's a good way to approach it as well. It's it's really not about you anymore. And I've made that similar reference. And now I'm wondering if it was from her. But it is at some point selfish to keep it in. Like, why? if you have the ability to help people, why wouldn't you help people? That's kind of like the mentality or how I see it. And that's what how that resonates with me as well. I think that's a great quote, and I think that's a great thing for people to live by. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have to remind myself of that every time I'm, like, scared to share something. It's like, nope, it's not mine. It's going to help someone. It's not about me anymore. And I think that that's what kind of makes it, at least for me, makes it a little bit easier to share. Do you find that as well? Like, knowing that, hey, I may be vulnerable in this state, but because I'm sharing this, 
Like, I know somebody's going to be helped because of this, more than likely. Oh, yeah. And we're, we're over the guru society now. We're ready. We're, we're begging for people to be vulnerable, for yeah. us to see people's pain, for us to see people's courage, not just have someone on stage telling us to jump up and down and believe that you're good enough. <laughs> I mean, we actually, we don't want the guru anymore. We see past it. Like this society right now, I mean, that my business name, no BS therapy, this society right now, we see through the BS and we want real people, real connections. Absolutely. Cause you just got to look in on yourself and that's what I want. Like I want real no shit people. And that's one of the beautiful things of this podcast. And I truly say that because there's just real people on here. Now I've had some really successful people on here, but one thing I just try to capture always is that these are people, they didn't just start successful, you know, however they quantify success, but they've started like in your example, like you had a nine to five, you did the marriage and family therapy for eight years, and then you made the transition. So it's always feasible to make this transition. And then more importantly, I always want to have this resonate with people that to help people as well. So you can make your own transition, work on yourself and then help people. And then it's, you know, and then even more so, it's not a bad thing for you to monetize that at all. And, and you Absolutely. just you just hit all those brackets for me. Yep, check, check, check. <laughs> I know, so that's perfect. And thank you so, so much for speaking with me today. I've absolutely enjoyed it. You are glowing and I know it's because you're out there and you're doing what you wanna do, which is there's no feeling like that. And then you're also helping people and there's really no feeling like that either. So thank you so much for being here, Amy. Aw, thank you so much for having me, Chris. And thank you for what you do in connecting with people and sharing all of this for as many people as you reach. Yeah, it's super fun. And that's like, <laughs> I just have a great time. I love meeting and speaking with people like yourself and I've had a great time and I hope to encourage, you know, you and I both have a podcast. So hopefully maybe somebody else is like, all right, I've had enough. Like. I'm going to get vulnerable. I'm going to start my own podcast and I'm going to, whatever it is, just be vulnerable and share your story. Yes. Yeah. Anyone can do it. I mean, we're, we're at the time right now. You can, you can be famous just from one YouTube video. I mean, you never know. And that's the thing. You, you never, ever know what's going to set it off, but just get out there, be vulnerable and share your story. So Amy, where can people find you? How can they contact you if they want no bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> So they can go to nobstherapy.com and find my, my website that way. My podcast is called Shattering BS Beliefs. So it's on iTunes, Google, all kinds of major platforms. Awesome. Well, once again, thank you so much for being with me today. And I absolutely know my guests gained a lot of value from this podcast. It was incredible and I really enjoyed myself. Thank you. Me too. All right. See ya.